Trinity Washington University for a very special hour. Now, as you know, there is a new Congress in town, the 116th, and a new speaker in her second turn with the gavel in the midst of yet another government shutdown. Now, we've got a lot to get to, so let's jump right in and bring out a proud Trinity Washington Tiger from the class of 1962. Please welcome the newly reelected Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi. Congratulations. I first want to congratulate you. I watched your swearing in yesterday. Quite a historic moment. Um, and of course, to, to sort of mark that moment, we've got a few people that you might know. We've got some alums, some of your former classmates are here behind me that have come here to celebrate you, as well as some friends and family and fellow students. So I'm going to jump right in because obviously the context of this conversation is that the government remains shut down. Um, yesterday, the House jumped right in working uh, and passed six bills to reopen the government. But tell us, kind of, give us the preview of how this is going to end, because you've made it very clear that the Congress of the United States is not going to appropriate money to build a wall. Mexico, who Donald Trump, the president, has said, said would pay for the wall, has made it clear they're not going to pay for the wall. Donald Trump is still insisting on $5.5 billion. How does this end? Well, first of all, let me say how happy I am to be at Trinity College. President McGuire, thank you for your hospitality and your leadership recognized nationally as a great academic leader in our country. Uh, thank you for bringing Secretary Sebelius, so responsible for the Affordable Care Act, our Trinity alum. And I'm happy my grandson Octavio is here and his dad, Peter. And in any event, uh, the, uh, we come into this Congress at a really very interesting time. It's really hard to imagine many more times in history that had been more challenging in terms of, uh, shall we say, the differences of opinion and values that are out there. We come into uh, a Congress, as you mentioned, Joy, that, uh, that, um, where the government is shut down. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the wall. The wall and the government shutdown really have nothing to do with each other. Mm -hmm. We passed bills yesterday, a package of six bills. I think it's important for the public to know what we passed yesterday was exactly what was passed by the Republican Senate. That's right. We gave them, we said, take yes for an answer. Mm -hmm. We're taking your language to open up government, separating out the subject of Homeland Security. Sure. We all believe in a border security. How we do that is how we have to, is our debate. But there's no reason to have the public pay a price in services, the workers pay a price in paychecks, sure. and our country, our economy, pay a price in what is happening because people are not confident. So this is a totally irresponsible thing to say we're connecting the shutdown to the wall. To the but, wall. But, you know, Mitch McConnell, your colleague, your counterpart in the Senate, has made it clear that even though these were Senate bills that were passed by Republicans, that he won't put them back on the floor unless the president approves of them. How do you get around this conundrum if the other half of the first branch of government will only act at the behest of the president. Well, I think that what Mitch McConnell is doing, and I say this as respectfully as possible, is saying we're not needed. Congress might as well stay home. All we need is one, one person to show up, Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And that's not what our founders had in mind. They talked about co-equal branches of government. Article one, the legislative branch, the people's branch of government. The, po the president can sign or not, but he, he should never say, I'm not even going to put it on the president's desk. Yeah. What he signed, I mean, we could have sent a bill of our own making, sure. Sure. but we said we'll send exactly what the Senate passed with over 90 votes yeah. in the, on the floor of the Senate or unanimously in committee. Yeah. We sent that exactly. And then for our separate bill on Homeland Security, we 
took their language exactly. This, the continuing resolution would last until February 8th. Take well, yes for an answer. Don't say Congress is irrelevant. Is sure. But and that's you, what he said. I realize you've been back in the speakership for a full, for one day, all of one day. But have you <laughs> spoken with Senator McConnell? Because I think a lot of the public is frustrated by the fact that Congress used to do a thing called send a bill to a president mm -hmm. to veto if he, if he so chooses. Have you spoken to Mitch McConnell about simply doing that? If Donald Trump wants to veto it, he could do so. Well, it's even more than that. The Constitution of the United States says that if Congress, two, if both houses pass a bill sure. and send it to the president, and the president doesn't want to sign it, mm -hmm. and it sits there for 10 days, not counting Sundays, it becomes the law. Right. So the president doesn't even have to sign it. Let, let's, let's talk about the bigger picture, because obviously this is a bigger issue. Uh, Donald Trump ran for president on, fundamentally on the issue of Let's of, not talk about Donald who, Trump. We're not going to talk about him, oh, but I want to talk about not, immigration. We're talking about the future. <laughs> no, we want to talk about the future. Oh, and I think... So it's I think, early in the morning. <laughs> oh, no, I guess not. It's late at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that the reason, and it's not really about him, because I think it's the fundamental question of who is an American. And now the Democrats have a chance to weigh in on that. It's a question fundamentally of how our immigration system helps to shape who we are and our values. Talk about what the House, what the Democratic House now plans to do about that, because there is still the need for comprehensive immigration reform. Absolutely. What would be in a bill that could come to the floor that you could see passing the House? Well, let me just quote Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, in his last speech as President of the United States, now that's a headliner, right? Ronald Reagan, the great communicator, his last speech, he said, in my last speech as President, I want to communicate a message to the people of the country I love. And he talked about, the, you have to read the speech, all of you, look it up. He talked about, he said, the vital force of America's preeminence in the world is every new generation of immigrants coming to America. Mm -hmm. And when America fails to recognize that, America will fail to be preeminent mm -hmm. in the world. I quoted Ronald Reagan in my comment yesterday. He further says, if we close the door yep. to new people coming to us, uh, we will fail to be preeminent. You have to read that speech. That's Ronald Reagan, mm -hmm. their hero. They didn't applaud for Ronald Reagan when I said that. They usually applaud for Ronald right. Reagan all the time. <laughs> but that is, the fact is we are, except if you're blessed to be a Native American, a nation of immigrants. Right. And every new generation of immigrants is a revitalization of America, well, making America more American. But well, what are the fundamentals? Give me one fundamental thing that must be in a bill. Is it DACA? Is it ending child separations? What's the fundamental thing that must be in a bill from your point of well, view? Well, from the we'd have the best way we could go is, and which we hope the president will agree to, is comprehensive immigration reform, where we address the whole package of reforms. We had always said, well, all, all of us together will go, uh, except the DACA situation, the, uh, the, the dreamers that right. became such uh, an urgent matter mm -hmm. and still is, uh, that we separated that out. So that would be a part of it. But if you have comprehensive immigration reform where you talk about people coming forward, uh, coming forward, because that it, it, people are not going to come forward if that means they come forward and then they're arrested and deported. Sure. So they, they come forward, they're recognized for um, uh, if they owe taxes or mm -hmm. whatever it is, usually it isn't the case, but sure. nonetheless, whatever that would be. But anyway, to have a legalization process mm -hmm. for the 11 million people who are in the United States sure. and recognizing that that brings them out of the shadow and into our economy mm -hmm. in a fuller way. So from a pragmatic standpoint, it helps. It's a positive yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, in terms of dreamers, obviously that's a, an easy fix for us to do. President Obama did that by executive sure. order, which is President cruelly uh, pulled back. Mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully in, the, in a short period of time we right. can correct that. Okay. But it would have to have things that address temporary protected status, mm -hmm. TPS, which is very, very important. Uh, for Central Americans, for some people from uh, Africa, South of the Sahara, for uh, people from the Caribbean and mm -hmm. the rest, temporary protective status. Mm -hmm. But it has to be something that says that we want people who are here to be full participants 
in America and that we're not raiding job sites sure. and, and this and that and instilling fear. Mm -hmm. And it is, uh, uh, we, we've been through this. Mm -hmm. Secure our borders, legalize the people who are here so that they can participate fully. Mm -hmm. Do so in a way that energizes America, which has always been the case yep. with newcomers coming. Absolutely. And I emphasize that secure our borders because mm -hmm. that's a responsibility to protect and sure. defend our country. The yep. president would not, uh, the inference that you draw from a wall is that's the only way to do that. That right. actually is an immorality. It builds walls mm -hmm. in people's minds about who should come here and the sure. rest. It's a very sad thing that yeah. he's doing to instill that kind of uh, fear of Absolutely. newcomers to our country. So very different from Ronald Reagan, George Herbert Walker Bush, mm -hmm. Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, mm -hmm. Barack Obama, a whole, all of the modern presidents. Yeah. This is a departure. Well, let, as this is a town hall, I want to get a student's question in. Okay. So I'm going to go uh, to our first student, who is Michelle Vasquez. Uh, and Michelle is a freshman political science major here at Trinity. Oh. Michelle, ask your question. Ms. Pelosi, I would like to first of all congratulate you on your Thank successful you. re-election as Speaker of the House. Um, I want to start off by mentioning, on Christmas Eve, a boy from Guatemala passed away due to inattentive care under U.S. custody. And my question to you is, what can we do, if anything, to improve U.S. supervision of migrants and create and establish safer detention center facilities? And just to clarify, there were two children, uh, Jacqueline Kyle, age seven, who was a Guatemalan girl who died uh, in U.S. custody at the border on December 8th, followed by Felipe, Felipe. Gomez Alonzo, who you're referring to. Um, not only were they the second two children who died in one month, but I believe in the last decade, this is the most deaths that we've had in U.S. custody. What can we do about it? What can the Congress do Well, there have been other deaths in custody, but Felipe and Jacqueline uh, are tragic and, and are raise the question that Michelle asked. One of the things that is really important for us to do is to make sure, first of all, we want to have a more respect for the people coming, but that's without going to that place, just to be talking about having uh, standards for medical care. The, the, there, Jacqueline really did not have any attention paid to her in a proper medical way before boarding, uh, boarding that bus. So we have uh, in our group someone named Dr. Raul Ruiz, who is a, a, a member of Congress, a doctor, and he and others are, ha, have been suggesting for a while, and now it's more preeminent, that there be personnel there assigned that can, can make judgments about uh, uh, medical decisions about these people, young people or not, but th that these happen to be young uh, makes it more, all the more tragic. Uh, but shameful that we don't have that. There were certain um, uh, protocols that were not followed. The, uh, the inspector general will be investigating, uh, at least Jacqueline's case and now Felipe's probably, but when I last, uh, when, before Felipe died, we understood that the inspector general would be making an mm -hmm. investigation about what, uh, what they didn't do, what needs to be done. Right. But we know for sure, we know for sure that they are lacking in the med uh, trained medical professionals uh, to be there mm -hmm. uh, to make judgment. Mm -hmm. So we have to be more, uh, shall we say, responsible when it comes to children, Indeed. with their children coming over the border, not putting them in cages, separating them from their parents. Mm -hmm. How could this be in America, the greatest yeah. country that ever existed in the history of the world? Yeah, and we know that you uh, emphasized that point uh, about concern for children in bringing uh, even the bringing children. the children into yeah. the gallery yesterday when you accepted the speakership. Uh, and coming up, uh, we'll have more with Speaker Pelosi. Speaker Pelosi will tell us what's on the Democratic agenda for the House. Plus, mm -hmm. investigations and that other I word, impeachment. What should Donald Trump expect from House Democrats in 2019? More from our exclusive town hall with the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, from Trinity Washington University, coming up.